The Potala Palace is the very heart of Tibetan Buddhism. To understand any religion, you have to go to its very spiritual heart, and this is the heart of Tibetan Buddhists, and that's why Tibetan Buddhists from all over the world come to worship here, because it was the seat, the throne, the holy see, if you will, of the Dalai Lama. And the current Dalai Lama is in exile in India and is not permitted to uh, come back here where his uh, predecessors are all buried. And so the Potala Palace is to Tibetan Buddhism what the ancient temple was to the Jewish people, what the Vatican is to Catholics today worldwide, what Mecca is to Muslims worldwide. Well, that's what the Potala Palace is. It represents the very heart of the Tibetan religion. For over 200 years, there have been many attempts to try to penetrate Tibetan Buddhism with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yet the response has almost been negligible. In fact, the best estimates tell us that there are perhaps between 100 and 150 known Tibetan Christians in the entire world. Well, one of the reasons we're here is because there is a light into this darkness. And his name is Pastor Nima Cheering. He spent years in the Potala Palace. For some 38 years, he was a Buddhist monk from the age of six. And we are tremendously privileged and honored and humbled to have been in partnership with Pala, as we affectionately call him, Father, for over a decade. God is using him and his son, Jakob, as lights into the Tibetan world. So God bless you as you listen to their heart for their people. And then we invite you to join us in partnering with them to penetrate the heart of Tibetan Buddhism with the love of Jesus Christ. My name is Nima Chiring. This is my story. I was born in January 1917 in Shangchun, Tibet. Nima Chiri was born to a family of farmers in an exotic world of breathtaking vistas and ancient rituals. At the age of six, Nima entered a monastery where he lived the Spartan life of a Buddhist Lama. So Pala was eager to go to a monastery. He always wanted to go to a monastery, wear those new clothes and those gumboots and the red robes. He was quite eager to do that. And he grew up in the monastery and there were over 4,000 monks in that monastery. Shang Gandhichavar, which was totally destroyed by the Chinese authorities. A huge monastery in a big land, hill landscape. Situation very beautifully located. And right from every end of Shang, his hometown, his home state, I mean, they could view that monastery. It was in such a location. And Tibetans, when they see the monastery, they start worshipping from far when they see the structure, that kind of respect and faith they had in the monasteries. So he really wanted to go and join a monastery and and he stayed that in that monastery for around, you think, nearly 32 years of his lifetime. After many years devoted to studying the Buddhist scriptures and eventually serving under the bodyguard of the Dalai Lama in the Patala Palace, Nima left his beloved Tibet 
and traveled to India on pilgrimage. Nima spent 14 years in India and was befriended by Christian missionaries who helped him recover from malaria and tuberculosis. He found faith in Jesus Christ and after moving to Nepal, discovered the true meaning of service by feeding and assisting Tibetan refugees fleeing their country. In 1983, he started Champa Choling, or Place of Love, where today he and his family care for over 40 needy children. He thought of a name for a long time, but he thought Champa Choling is the best word to put because he talks about compassion. And compassion plays a center stage role in Tibetan Buddhism. So if we as Christians can depict compassion in that other way, by serving them, it would be very effective. We thought that way. That's how it's called Champa Churi. It's a place of love in Tibetan. Nima has recently completed a decades-long project of translating the Old Testament into the Tibetan language. And now, at the age of 88, Nima continues to dream of what yet can be done. So we're just hoping and praying that we are going to move fast here and start God's work as soon as possible. It's been several years now since we made the historic fact-finding trip into Tibet in order to film the history of Pala, Pastor Nima Chiring. A lot has happened since that time, and we plan to go back soon. But there are still tens of thousands of faithful Tibetan Buddhists who are walking around the Potala Palace in uh, Tibet, uh, spinning their prayer wheels and flying their flags as they are at the Buddhist stupa in Kathmandu, Nepal, and in, in India and other parts of the world. But let me tell you what God has been doing since that last trip. One of the things that has taken place that we are most excited about is the fact that Pala has just completed 15 years of Bible translation, and here are the actual manuscripts of translating the scriptures into the language, the heart language of the Tibetan people. It has not yet been published, but we hope that it will be soon. My wife has just finished writing for an American audience his life story called A Tibetan Buddhist Story. Many of you are now holding that new book in your hand and we believe it's going to be a great tool that God is going to use. Other tools that we have helped them do is to print a Tibetan track on the Good Shepherd written in Tibetan and with Tibetan art on it. Also originally because Pala is not only a Bible translator but like David, he is a psalmist and has written the only known hymns in Tibetan, in the uh, ethnic indigenous music style of the Tibetan people. And uh, those have been widely used in the Tibetan diaspora in the countries of Nepal and India and also in the country of Tibet. But the thing that we are most excited about is this new little solar digital player. It is produced by a partner ministry called Mega Voice, and they produce these very compact, about the size of a cell phone, little solar digital players that can be recharged by the sun. They play about 10 hours and then can be recharged, and on them you can have the entire Bible. Well, at the age of 95 and 96, Paula did scripture readings from both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we are now getting ready to distribute these. This is the very first of its kind that has ever been produced. And after over 200 years of missionary attempts in the Tibetan world, missiologists tell us that there are maybe two to 300 at best known Christians in the Tibetan world. We believe this is going to be one of the great breakthrough tools in the Tibetan world. You see, many of the Tibetans, of the so-called uh, some two million unreached people in the world today, unreached people groups, most of them are oral learners. 
If you gave them a written Bible, they could not read it even in their own language. And so now the Bible is being put on these uh, solar digital players and we're getting ready to distribute them into the Tibetan world. Each of these cost us with a subsidized price of $25. We need to have thousands of these to distribute in the Tibetan world. So we challenge those of you all who have been praying for our partnership with Pala and his son Jakob and uh, his wife Linda and Amala to come alongside us and join us in uh, networking these Tibetan Bibles, oral Bibles, into the Tibetan world so that they can hear the gospel and turn to the true and living gods, lay down their prayer wheels, because this is nothing more than what Jesus called the vain repetition of the heathen. Now they can hear just through the touch of a button, they can hear God's word in their own language both as it is written and as it is sung. Listen to the words of Pala Chiring. So I hope that many of you will send in gifts to help us buy and distribute these so that Tibetan people can hear God's word in their heart language. God bless you for the people of Tibet.